Tito, wash my face. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Start my day. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs. Eat some breakfast, milk and eggs. Brush my teeth up, wash my face. Throw my clothes on, start my day. Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows. Okay, I know that today will be a good day. Okay, I know that today will be a good day. A, B, C, one, two, three. Drink some water, brush my teeth. Get out of bed and I stretch. Bed in my hair is a mess. Look through my clothes for a fit. Anything I do is drip. Feel like a kid when I'm tick tock and I still keep it real as it is. I show my age, I don't switch often. I'm just as a dad as it gets. Try taking naps with my kids, talking. I'm guessing this life how it is. And I can't wait for the weekend. Keep jammies on like I'm a kid. Yeah. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs. Eat some breakfast, milk and eggs. Brush my teeth up, wash my face. Throw my clothes on, start my day. Wake up. I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Yum, yum, yum. Let's go. See the sun shining from the windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know that today will be a good day. No, no, no. Okay, I know that today will be a good day. Yeah, yeah. Feel good, feel great. Can't complain. Look out my window, see birds and planes. Sun's out, some clouds in my rain. Siblings on my nerves, on my nerves again. Summertime go for a swim. Winter time go grab a sled. Spring I might need an umbrella. Fall back in school with my friends. Attitude change like the weather. My mom tell me it never ends. Like clocks we evolve in a circle. Every 12 months we do it again. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs. Eat some breakfast, milk and eggs. Brush my teeth up, wash my face. Throw my clothes on. Wake up, get up, stretch my yum, yum, legs yum. Eat some breakfast, milk and yeah, yeah, eggs yeah. Brush my teeth up, wash my yum, face yum. Throw my clothes on, start my yeah, day yeah, yeah. Driving on the road like I'm the only one Shooting to the green, I talk a hole in one Bible on the dash, they with the holy one I know I put in work, they didn't notice nothing Switch gears, clubhouse, took me six years Marble floors, gold trim, feel like I'm Richie Rich Tie left, French suede, I mix the fist sick Quick loss, take a risk, we play for the win Might spend a mill at the rug store like Manafort but making purchases you can't afford I move the money like it's illegal Something more of rigor mortis Where I move dead people lay low Took L's, know how those days go Say so, he say but nothing ain't no Pesos, deals locked, it's like a case closed Bank road, different league, we don't use money phones Trusting the artist, he's saying steady for it Pray up to the Lord, he knows I'm ready for it All on the earnest, you know I'm heading towards it Eyes on the Rolex, it's like a Chevy for it Driving on the road like I'm the only one Shooting to the green, I talk a holy wine Bible on the dash, they with the holy wine I know I put in work, they didn't notice nothing Switch gears, clubhouse, took me six years Marble floors, gold trim, feel like I'm Richie Rich Tight left, French suede, I mix the fist sick Quick laws, take a risk for the win. Chips all on the board, no, I'm invested. No, I'm invested. Italian blazer, come double breasted. Loafers in Florence, we pay for it. Paid the Through every battle, I was testing. Now I'm vetted, talking top floors. Luck sweet, see dreams are not yours. Got mine, going global, it's like a world tour. Kids straight, savings growing, it's what we work for. Wifey great, love flowing, we don't need Cupid stupid. Nova bring the bass and watch them screw face. Spit to the pressure, give me toothaches. You play checkers, I chess them to see who moves fake. I want that Bruce Wayne money, no time for two face. Old friends doubted me, I cut the loose ends. Real friends around me, the whole crew's in. Came from pain driven and hot temper to calculate it, passing on my mentors. Driving on the road like I'm the only one. Shooting to the green, I talk a hole in one. Bible on the dash, they with the holy wine. I know I put in work, they didn't know. Switch kids, clubhouse, took me 
six years, marble floors, gold trim, feel like I'm Richie Rich, Italian leather, French sway, I mix the fifth, sick, quick loss, take a risk, we play for the win. Turn this down real quick, and of course, I got a little microphone problem. This is the problem. Ready? See if you guys can hear. 
Yep, that's true. So let me just one sec fix this and then I'll be right. Okay, here we go. Let's see if tape, if tape can fix it, I really hope. Temporary. Mic check for sure. All right, let's pray. Here we go. Let's pray. Is it good? Is it good? Like MacGyver. There we go. All right, I think that's good. Sweet. Hopefully it'll last the whole show. Thank you guys so much for being a part of today with me. Uh, I'm really excited. We're going to, I'm obviously always excited, but uh, we're going to go over two different haircuts, two different trends that are supposedly happening uh, in 2021, spring of 2021. Um, really excited to see you guys in the chat, blowing it up. You guys are the best. So here's the deal. This is what I want you guys to do. If you're new to the show, then please type new in the chat. If it's your, uh, if you've watched this for a long time, you're an OG, you've been watching the show forever, then type OG in the chat. Um, and I love seeing that. Also, I like seeing where you guys are from as well. So post that in the chat. And the more you write and the more you get involved, not only do we build this community bigger, but it spreads it throughout social media because Facebook and all of those different um, companies see that there's a lot going on. And so they're going to share it to more people. So you guys are doing me a favor by typing as much as you can in the chat. So let's blow it up. Also, I love seeing all the new people. Uh, also, here's the deal. So this class is free, obviously. Uh, we have an app called FSE Now, which is available on uh, Android and iPhone. It's right here. So you can see uh, you download it. You're going to get alerts on any of these classes that I do live. Also, you can watch the replays of the classes. You can also search for other education. Uh, and there's a million other things on there. You can also become part of our virtual cutting club, which meets every Monday. Uh, every Monday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we cut hair over Zoom, so you can become part of that. That is a monthly subscription, but, um, you know, this is what it's all about. So just getting you guys together. Love having you guys all in this room. Uh, ask a lot of questions. That's what this is about. I I'm recording, those of you guys that are new, I'm recording this video to cut it up to be a shorter video that lives on YouTube and Facebook and all of that, uh, but I like doing it live because... Um, then you guys can ask questions, get interactive, and you know I can answer your questions as well. So if you have a question, number one thing to do is to type Q in the chat or Q in the chat. So just like this, type Q and put your question. So all you have to do is type Q and then ask your question. That way I can see it because the chat's flying through. You guys are writing a lot, which I love. Um, so I can see which ones are questions and which ones are just you guys chatting uh, throughout. So uh, that is that. Um, and last but not least, of course not least, uh, this show is brought to you by my friends at Minerva Beauty. Dot com. Um, we are live on their Facebook as well. We do this every single Tuesday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, thanks to Minerva. And also, we have a new sponsor on this uh, show, Paul Mitchell. So very excited to have them part of the show as well, supporting the show. Uh, just cool as it grows, you know, we get more involvement from hair companies. They're all about education. So if you're looking for salon furniture, check out MinervaBeauty.com, uh, salon equipment, blow dryers, different things. Uh, and obviously Paul Mitchell Hair Care, you guys probably have known forever. Um, I worked for them for a very long time uh, as an educator on the road. So it's really cool to have them. And I know their products really well. It's really cool to have them a part of this uh, Tuesday show as well. So uh, very excited to get started. Um, let me break down the first look that we're going to do. So we're going to do two different Bob haircuts today. Um, this Cosmopolitan uh, 
online, I'm not going to say magazine, but online is saying that these are 2021 trends. I'd love to hear if you guys think uh, if you guys think that these are trends coming up or if they've already been trends, in my opinion, the one length bob has been a trend for quite a while. They're saying it's going to be even more trendy. So uh, coming t spring 2021. So let's take a look at the first look that we have here. Pop it up. Um, so just straight, straight bob, uh, one length. So that's what we're going to cut today. This can transfer into cutting any one length. So the section thing that I'm going to do uh, will transfer over. If you guys want to cut this longer, if you want to cut it even shorter, you can do that as well. Um, and then we're going to transfer this haircut into and just do a couple tweaks. And we're going to change it into this cut right here, which is, I believe, going to be the more popular one of 2021 because uh, I think it's Handmaid's Tale, possibly, on Netflix. Um, a lot of hairstyles are popping out from that is what I'm reading. And it's the flipped out look. So it's kind of crazy because... Uh, when I was in beauty school in 2004, this was a trend where the hair kind of flipped out a little bit. It was more layered throughout the, the top, if some of you guys remember that. Um, but it was, a, it was a trend. Everybody was kind of wearing their hair with these winged out uh, pieces. So pretty cool to see that they're taking kind of a one length bob. We're going to texturize the ends a little bit and, uh, and then cut that textured fringe at the end. But that's what's going to change this look from being... Um, you know, just that one length center part bob to then becoming this haircut. So cut pretty much the same until the very end where we uh, change those couple of things. Um, all right, cool. Let's see. So if you guys, all right, wondering if you received my email or text on the order I had placed. So Adrian, um, if I didn't get back to you, it means that I probably did not receive that. Let me put you over here. Um, but just email matt at freesaloneducation.com and uh, I'll get back to you today. So, because I want to make sure you get your order, obviously, or, or answer whatever your question is. So, um, all right. Yeah, it's very edgy, but it's kind of bringing the flip back. It is kind of bringing the flip back, which is, what I think is a little unique, you know, how styles come in, they come back out, they go back in. So it's going to be, um, it's going to be, you know, pretty cool. So <laughs> Arian, let's not start negative vibes. I'm, I see you now. So post your question. I'll answer your question. The chat is flying through. Look at this. So let me just see, show you guys here. Oops. So this is all I see. Right, so right here, I think I, hopefully it didn't freeze. But you guys can see here that it's coming through and as people are chatting, this is what I'm seeing right directly in front of me. So sometimes um, I, I miss the cue. That's why you have to put a cue because, <laughs> because of that. So instead of writing, I'm trying not to, Arian, write your question so I can answer it because I'd love to answer it right now before we get going. Uh, the name of the app is FSE Now. Let me put that up on the screen. Let me spin back around here. So here is, and let me go back to the main camera. All right. I'm trying to look for the question at the same time. So FSE Now, I have like three times. Okay, you don't have to ask it. It's cool. Um, I can only do what I can do, guys. Try my best. So FSE Now is the name of the app. So there we go. That's, uh, that's the, uh, you could download it on the app store on whatever phone you have. All right, cool. So let's get into the show. Will you be using the Tri-Razor? I will use the Tri-Razor at the end to cut the, the fringe, which is our new tool. Uh, it's available on shopfse.com. So I will post that link in a little bit, but it's shop FSE. Um, we came out with this tool in December. Uh, it's been selling like crazy. You guys are so awesome for buying it. Thank you so much. It has three different razors in it, cuts three different ways. So we're going to create texture at the end of this cut. I want to do a blunt edge uh, with a scissor to start the haircut. And then I'm going to do a, um, there we go. And then I'm going to do a softer edge using the tri-razor at the very end. All right. 
So, Arian, I see your question. Do you only teach your classes on Monday? Will you teach on any other days besides Monday? So as of right now, um, we seem to have a pretty tight-knit group on Mondays that are available on Monday. Any other day that I've done uh, so far, people couldn't make it. So Monday seems to be the best day. I, but I do foresee other days in the future. That's what we're uh, trying to because I'm trying to add multiple different things for the virtual cutting club. So uh, his question is about the, I think it's, uh, is about the cutting club. Um, we do a Mondays, like I said, at 11 a.m. So uh, if you guys are available at that time, it's cool to sign up because you get a lot of hands-on work. I can see you cutting hair over Zoom and I can talk to you and you can ask questions and it's just a very interactive group. Uh, it's super fun. All right. April, yes, Tuesdays. Love it. Adele says Mondays are the best. Very cool. Um, all right, guys, let's get, uh, what shears do you like? I'll talk about that as we go. All right, let's get started. Okay, so when we talk about the first haircut, um, sectioning is the most important thing that we're going to go over today. So let me zoom in a little bit. All right, and now we are going to comb it back, straight back, and this haircut is built off of a center parting. So what I want to do is I want to find that direct center. I'm going to look right at the bridge of the nose here, and I'm going to follow that line back, and then I'll show you guys the move we make after that. So right here, straight back, find the bridge of the nose, and then I'm going to draw my line straight down the center. We'll part it. go. And then once I have the center parting, then I'm going to move to the back and I'm going to follow through into the back. Now there's one other uh, parting that I'm going to make, and this is um, kind of an optional parting, right? So obviously this one is not. This one I would always make straight down center back. There we go. So now we've split right side and left side. Now what I want to do is I want to split front and back. So now we've got front and back. How do we split that? You could say right at the ear. That's what I learned in beauty school. For me, I've, I've learned to shift back a little bit. I think Sam Villa was the one that really brought that to light for me, uh, was finding that hairline. So what I'll do is you, if you look, at your uh, haircut that you're doing here. Let's see if I can zoom in. Right under here, you've got this hairline that comes down. Now, all clients are different. Some might have a little bit more of an angled hairline. What I would do is just find the thickest density part and go straight up from that. So right here, I will comb the hair down from the top of the crown here, all that hair that wants to fall to the back. And I'm going to section it down. And I go right into that hairline area. Now, I'm going to take just a little bit more of that section and I want to get as straight of a line as possible. So here we go. Let me do it again. And what that does for me is as I comb that hair down, this works in a very straight line. And I'll run this into the ground for you guys. I've talked about it every single class that we do, but... The fact is that this density here, all the way from here to here and around the head to that same point is the same density, same thickness. Now, all this density to the front here is all the same thickness as well. So I want to separate that so that I'm aware during my haircut of what my density is that I'm working with. So you'll see right there, Let me section it up with a clip, clip that away. We got that nice and tight and then you've got your back, all right? So same thing, I'm gonna to move to the opposite side.
and I'm going to comb the hair from that high point or that high point of the crown down the hairline. I'm going to go a little bit further over. The same thing here. Comb this hair to the front. Nice and tight. So I want to work that root area. Oh, my hair's getting dry. Work that root area here. There we go. And then once I get that comb tight, I grab my clip. I clip it away. So now we've got the front and back separated. And we've got the right and left separated in the back. Okay? So now, next section is going to be right across that occipital bone area. Haven't you had those clients that have different densities on each side in the back? So, I mean, Chris, that's like, yes, I would say there probably are people like that. Um, you know, that density to me can't be that different. I mean, it's not going to be that different unless something happened and they have a scar or something, so they're missing quite a bit of hair. But my biggest thing is the stretch of hair. So where... It's, it is from nape to high point of the crown. That's all consistent. Um, as opposed to here, where we're only top of the ear to the, to the high point of the crown, that's going to be a lot less hair. So that difference to me is a big deal. Also, when you're cutting uh, around the head, it's good to be aware of where this goes up on the hairline so that as you're cutting, you can decide, do you want to follow the head shape? Do you want that head shape to be exposed in the outer perimeter? Or do you want, um, do you want to hide that, um, that outer perimeter from being mimicking the hairline, I guess you could say. So, um, so that's kind of where I'm at with that. I don't, obviously some people could have differences, but I feel like that's, you know, something you just have to address on when that happens because it's not that it's pretty rare i would say but yes i believe it could happen i can't recall anybody though all right so now i'm going to go right horizontally across the occipital bone here i'm going to comb it nice and tight just like that and then clip it away Slide that clip up underneath. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side here. Come right in. Draw my line. Cross. Now, based on density, I could take this a little bit shorter. Like, I could take less hair. Um, we're working with medium density to, to low... to uh, lower density, so a little bit less hair, a little bit finer hair, so medium to fine. Um, so I can go all the way up to occipital bone and cut a nice blunt line in there and have no issues whatsoever. So just base that on the density. If you need to break up this section, feel free to break up the section. All right, so we got our scissor. Um, now I'm going to pop her up a little bit. Will this be a layered cut? So Arian, it will not be a layered cut. Um, we're cutting it one length. There will be a slight bit of layering in the second look. Um, probably more graduation than layering, but uh, we will not be elevating the hair for this particular look. So now, let's talk about shape. So just because we're cutting it one length doesn't mean we don't want to think about the shape that we're going to cut as well. So do we want to bring and over direct the hair back and cut it. So cutting it more in a line here, what's that going to do? 
uh, as the head starts to curve around right here, that over direction starts to happen to bring it to the back. What that's going to do is push a little bit of length to the front. And that'll start us on a path to create more of an A line that kind of follows the jaw as opposed to a nice kind of rounded line that goes with the head shape that way. Um, for me today, I, I want to cut it going with the head shape because I want this to just be a nice, blunt, solid line that works its way around. Um, so that so I'm going to choose not to over direct everything back. Um, I'm also going to use the wide teeth of my comb to hold things steady as I cut because the wide teeth are going to give it not too much tension, but they will hold it in place, which is nice uh, when you're going into cut and you don't want to elevate the hair at all. So I just use my comb, pull it down, and cut. I also want to make sure I have even saturation on the hair. When you're trying to get a really nice blunt line and the hair starts to dry up, what's going to happen is you're going to start pushing the hair um, be when it's dry because a scissor tends to push dry hair a little bit more than it does when it grips wet hair. It's just the reality. So here we go. Everything's nice and saturated. Now, we talked about shape a little bit. Um, now I want to talk about body positioning. My body position for this, let me see if, if this will give us a good view. So if let's say I'm working in the back of the head here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, so um, knock stuff over. So body position wise, I want to make sure that I'm standing directly in the back of the head. So if I'm here and my partings are here, just shift this a little bit. That one sunk down a little bit more than the opposite. Okay. So now if I have, if I'm standing in the back of the head like this, I don't want to tilt and come in here to cut. I also, I don't want to stand on the side and cut because it's really hard to cut a straight line. If you're standing there like this and you lean in to cut your line, your eyes then shift, right? So if my eyes shift like this, how it's a lot harder to cut a straight line throughout the haircut. That's just what I've found in the past. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand directly behind. I'm going to comb down like this, and I'm going to keep my eyes level with the comb. So I'll comb down, keep my eyes level, and work my way across the, the hair this way, and just cut a little bit at a time, and then start working my way into uh, the round of the head there. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So I understand that that camera angle, this was closer, but you couldn't see my body position. So I want you guys to know the body positioning, and now you can watch me cut it close. All right. So Carrie, uh, fun fact here. She's saying she wishes I was closer so I could cut her hair. Um, fun fact. Well, I don't take new clients, but... Uh, what I do is we built a website called stylistlocator.com, stylistlocator.com. So any stylist that is signed up for our app will have a profile on there. So if you go to Stylist Locator and you um, search your area, you'll put your zip code in. And then from that, um, it'll pull up stylists that use our app that are in your area. And you can send them a message directly from the website and it'll go to their account on FSE now. So pretty cool. So just make sure, uh, go on there, put in your zip code and find somebody. Now, if they have a blue check mark next to their name, uh, this is one cool fun fact. If they have a blue check mark, it means that they're part of our virtual cutting club. So they literally meet with me every Monday and they cut hair with me uh, and I get to make adjustments and we talk about haircutting and we get very in-depth with haircutting uh, together. So that's a really cool way to know that somebody's really uh, in contact with me throughout the app. Um, Delilah, you're very welcome. I'm glad uh, you like that idea. All right. So here we go. I'm going to comb down. Like I said, my body position is what I was talking about. So my eyes are flat with the head. I'm looking at my angle here and how I'm going about it. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to cut 
my blunt line. So I'm going to start working this blunt line across. I don't do too much at once. So I'll get this hair out of the way. So here, and now I don't mind dipping into this corner a little bit. So knowing that, let's see where I'm at. There we go. So I don't mind coming in here and then just dipping into the corner a little bit and cutting around. So I am slightly angling my comb forward, but it's not as much as if I over direct to the hair back. See how that starts to go away? That's because I, I rounded the corner. So if I didn't round the corner, there would be hair right here and it would be a guideline that came across like this. So I wanted to round that corner a little bit, but I still want it to drop and kind of follow the jawline. I just don't want it to extend down too much. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comb the hair and now I'm gonna work a backhand cutting technique, which will allow me to cut the hair in the same direction I cut it this way. So if you look at um, here, if I start cutting and I work the scissor this way, I'm cutting, pushing the hair this way. So then what I want to do is I want to flip the scissor, start from the middle here, and now cut this way so that I'm pushing the hair the same in both directions. You could, I've seen people do it both ways. For me, this just works a little bit better. I can still keep my eyes kind of flat and uh, parallel to the section, and I just go through and I cut my line here. So I'll go through it. more, comb in, I just use the tip of the scissor to cut through that line because uh, the tip of the scissor is not going to push the hair as much, so I just kind of chop through it. If you try to do too much at once, you're going to push hair uh, and you're going to get an unbalanced line. So now I'll go through here in the back, I'm going to comb the hair down and see where I'm at. And then I'll just clean this line a little bit if I feel I need to, keeping my eyes still flat. So just like that. Now, I don't need this to be perfect because I'm going to go back in in the blow dry and define that line even more. So there's no reason to keep it perfect throughout. We're going to work here. I'm going to continue up the head shape. So I'll take another horizontal line that wraps around the head a little bit. I'm going to comb that hair down. Get the rest nice and tight. Get it ready to re-comb in a little bit. Back out. Okay. So I comb the hair down. And now... I'm not even going to use comb tension. I'm just going to go through and cut with my eyes parallel to the section and follow around the head shape. Just like that. And I'm going to continue up this section. I want to do this kind of in salon speed because uh, it's obviously very repetitive, but the real details come in the dry cut. So uh, follow along with me as we get through here and we work towards blow drying. So I comb everything, make sure it's consistent from scalp to ends. And then I go through and I cut. Another little rule, little tip is I don't mind cutting just each section just the tiniest bit longer than the previous. What that's gonna do is give me a little bit of a bevel uh, on the end, which kind of helps throughout there. Sid Orn, I appreciate it very much. Glad you're enjoying the video. So I'll do a couple more. Actually, what I like to do, change my mind a little bit. I like to change my mind. That's one thing. Um, I'm going to work the opposite side for a few sections, and then I'll go back to it. That's something I've been trying to get more in the habit of so that I keep a more balanced uh, line and length and shape. So 
clip it up. Now I'm working the opposite side. Make sure that the head is not tilted any way weird. Let me go over here. So just like this, comb it down, no tension, cut your line across, and don't be afraid to round off in that corner, depending on the look you're going for. Cool. A couple more. To stay out of your guys' way there. All right. Very light tension with the comb. And if you guys haven't noticed, I got this P color 339 comb. These are coming to the shop. I don't know. I don't think they're up yet. We just got to inventory them, but they're coming to our shop FSE real soon. All right. Coming across. Let me see if I can zoom in even more. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Wow. All right, so as I cut, I want to see if you guys can see. My guide is right there. I'm going to cut just a little bit below that guide. Work my way through. Again, that gives me the slight little bevel into my shape, and I'll define that line more when I get it dry. Okay, so now I'm going one past the other side. Your density will define how thick of uh, subsections you can take. I'm working with pretty fine hair, so I'm taking about one inch subsections at this point of the cut. Keeping my eyes parallel to this section. And I'll bring down the last bit. And just make sure that you're combing everything scalp to ends. And I would really encourage you guys, if you go sign up for the Virtual Cutting Club, um, that the first video you unlock and watch is the comb control video that we did a couple weeks ago because that, to me, is the key to getting better haircuts. All right. So that is that. All right. So again, break this in half, comb the hair down. So we got a new subsection here. And I'm going to work across. Last bit. And again, you could give it a little life. Like as I'm combing through this, I'm actually, you know, it's things that I don't think about all the time, but you just kind of naturally do. Um, I'm lifting the hair just a little bit and letting it drop down because I don't want it tight to the head. It's not gonna live like that. So if I pull the hair tight and cut it, it's not natural. It's not going to flow right after the blow dry. All right, so that's the back. Nice blunt edge on it. Again, this could be transferred into a one length that's this long 
you know, this long could be even further down. That subsection that we did, you know, it can kind of play into both all of it. The biggest difference would be you'd be cutting more of a square line in the back because uh, they have shoulders. So when you bring it down, you're going to be flat on the shoulders, cutting it. So it will be a little heavier towards the front, but that's all going to sit in the back anyways, and you kind of want that uh, throughout. Arian, uh, do you cut your sections lower each time to get that bevel look? Yes, I do. Um, Laura, yes, comb control is crucial. Exactly. Uh, Elizabeth. Yeah, Elizabeth, I didn't see your question. Uh, thanks for the help there, though. Um, Catherine, thanks for sharing the website. You guys are the best. If you could keep doing that, that would be great when people ask uh, where to get the tools and all of that. The OGs, you do me a favor. Just let people know what's up. All right, where's my spray bottle? There it is. All right, so now we move into uh, the right side. Now, it's crucial, and this is why I like to do this kind of separate, separate the front and the back. It's crucial to take a look at both sides and make sure they match up nice. If they don't, you've got to go through and correct it. If they match up, then obviously your sides will fall very similar as well. Now, is it always perfect? It's not always perfect. You might have to go in and your detail work and take one side a little bit different. That's where a lot of people don't show you that stuff. This part is the simple part, just going in and cutting it. The hardest part is going in and actually detailing your work to get it to be that final look. That's what I think really separates uh, different stylists is their ability to detail a standard haircut. Um, you know, these are just haircutting basics that we learn in beauty school. But if I blow this dry right after I cut these sides and I leave it like that, that's not going to be a very advanced looking haircut. So here we go. Comb it down. Now you could decide with your partings, do you want them to mimic the jaw? Um, what I like to do is I like to decide where, what kind of line I want in the front and then draw that as my parting. So if I wanted an angled line towards the face, I would draw that because I would use that once I comb the hair down, I would use that as my guide. Today, I want a more blunt edge. So I kind of want this round line to work its way around the head shape. So I'm going to do that in my parting. So I'm going to come around just like that. And that's what I'm going to follow. So here we go. I think this blue is going to have a really cool pop to it uh, in the end result. Excited for that. Okay. So now, same thing. I'm going to be cutting backhand, but my eyes will still be parallel to the section. So comb down if you want. Um, depending on what makes it easier for you. My client's head is going to be straight up and down, so I'm not tilting it at all uh, because I want it to be at natural fall. The other thing is that the um, uh, ear could stick out a little bit. So you could have a client whose ear kind of pops a little bit, pushes the hair out. So what I like to do is just comb that hair natural and then if you need to, you can tap the ear to just relieve a little bit of that um, uh, tension a little bit in the section, in the subsection. So here we go, comb it down. And now I'm going to comb or cut across and follow my guide. My guide is my parting. So just like that. Hopefully you can see. So you see my parting. You go down to my line, they're very similar, right? So I'm just going to continue working just like that. Creating that guideline, make sure that your parting stays similar each time. Comb this hair out of her face, clip it, comb it down from the scalp, work with my eyes parallel through. 
still cutting from back to front. From back to front. So you guys are killing it today. I can see there's a ton of people. Looks like we got about how many we have today. About a thousand on live right now. So you guys are sharing, I can tell. Keep hitting that share button. And you know what would be cool and something I've been thinking about a lot. And I'm not saying you have to do this, but I know there are people in here that are, you know, um, not hairdressers, and that's totally cool. I, I like that you get the inspiration, uh, and then I understand your struggle of finding a good hairdresser. What I would say is if you have it, your hairdresser, and something that always inspires me, and this is going to sound a little crazy, but I've been thinking about it, so let me talk to you for a sec. So this is going to sound a little crazy, but... They're like getting a comb, a new comb or a tri razor or a new brush, things like that can be a pretty big inspiration uh, for somebody. Just like, um, you know, you buy a new car and you clean it more than you ever cleaned your other car, like all of those things. So if you're looking to bring up conversation, uh, talk to your clients, you know, you could say that you saw a cool video and you get them a little gift that maybe is like a comb or a tri razor or something that's going to inspire them. And I got this idea because somebody emailed me and said that they were uh, buying the tri razor as a gift for their stylist, which I thought was super cool because if they liked that look and they bring this unique tool to the stylist and then introduce them to free salon education, it's kind of a cool way to, uh, to, to bring up that conversation and, and maybe ignite a little fire and make them excited again. So, you know, it's little things like that. It's possible, possible to be, uh, you know, something cool for them. So just something to think about if you're uh, watching. All right. And if you're a hairdresser too. I mean, anytime I get a new comb or clip or, you know, it just makes me excited, I guess. Cross, same thing, work my way through. So we're almost through this side. Let me get back to uh, salon pace here. Spray in the face. Drop her down a little bit. So Donna, you can get it at Shop FSE. So if somebody could post the link for me to the tri razor my tech friends in here, that would be awesome. So it's shopfse.com. Uh, it's right on the front page of that, but if you guys have the link and you could post it, you'd be doing me a huge favor. All right. So again, combing it down, no tension, work my way through. couple more. I actually think I can just do this in one because we had some layers in this cut. There's not much left. I want to share with you guys a little tip that um, I learned the other day shooting, watching, listening to my friend Ryan Belmonte, who works for Paul Mitchell. Um, I thought this was a really cool tip, which he said he combs the hair when he cuts a one length around the face, around the cheekbone, and then that way, when the client wears it to the side, which they're going to, instead of bringing it down like this and cutting it, because they're not going to wear it up against their face like that, you bring it over here, and you cut your line that way. And then that will give you just a little push to the front. And then when we blow it dry, we can detail it. But I thought that was a really cool way to think about it. So right here. Down. 
anytime I'm around somebody, I like to try to pull whatever I can from what they do. That's how we get better. So, super cool. You get that length. You comb it back. Now, obviously, when I comb this down, it's going to have a little disconnect from over-directing it. I'll deal with that in a dry cut and see where we're at. All right, so we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side here. Yeah, Michelle, I thought that was a great tip as well. Paul, thanks for uh, sharing the website. So, Robin, I want to address that a little bit. Uh, Robin's saying that we should only let licensed stylists in here. Um, I disagree, um, and which is totally fine. Everybody can have their own opinions. Um, I disagree because I think this brings awareness to the amount of skill that goes into what we do and the amount of thought that should go into what we do. And I think it brings awareness to somebody that sits in a chair and there's a stylist that does not uh, – put that much thought and effort into it and it makes them make a better decision. So I think it's good for both. I think it elevates the industry. Um, and anybody that wants to spend the next 16 years of their life trying to figure out haircutting like I have and wants to get as, you know, to know as much about haircutting as I do, um, more power to them. And I think they should be able to, and it's the same, but they're not going to learn it watching a YouTube or Facebook live. They're not going to um, be able to just, they might mimic something I'm doing, but they're not, they won't know. And if they mess up a little bit or their line gets a little bit weird because they don't really know what I'm talking about, then they're going to really struggle to fix that because it's years of practice um, that allows you to know how to do that. So I like being able to show off to customers, consumers, clients, how much I know. I do it behind the chair as well. I'll talk to my clients about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it. Um, I think that brings a better relationship between me and them. Um, and it's all about not being afraid of them being able to do what I do. And like I said, I would love to encourage any of them because all of us have a story of cutting hair before we were licensed because we just loved it. Maybe they love it, but I could change the oil in my car, but I don't want to, so I don't. I take it somewhere, but some people like saving the money. They like changing their oil in their car, you know? So I think it's, I think it's a good thing. That's just my opinion. Um, not everybody will share that opinion, and that's totally cool. That's what makes us all unique. All right. Here we go. Keep taking, I'm going to keep taking these subsections. This is so hard because I want to stand over here and comb, but then I want to go over there and cut. So we only have a few sections left, and then we'll start blow drying. You guys will really see the detail work that goes into the finished result. Plus, another cool, like, fun fact is that somebody that's not licensed cannot cut hair and make money doing it. So, you know, they're not taking clients from me. They might cut their own uh, unsuccessfully, probably, the majority of them. Um, but they're not taking my clients because my clients want a great haircut and they want a licensed person to do it. So... All right. I think we get upset too much. And I'm not talking about Robin now. I'm just saying in general. You just got to work hard. And you don't have to worry about anybody else. Learn every day. And you don't have to worry about anybody else. Because when they watch that YouTube video, I already learned more things. like my tip from Ryan. <laughs> All right, almost there, guys. Almost there. Finish line's awaiting. I'm going to turn her like this. 
I'm do this in two subsections. So I got the one, and I'm starting to comb it back into the rest of the hair now. And a good point to, to understand where to start combing it back into the rest of the hair is right here at the hairline. So uh, the hairline starts to go forward a little bit. You've got that recession point. So it starts to go forward. So I'm going to comb that recession point into the rest of the hair and drop it down. So there we go. And now cut across. It's a little harder because I don't want to stand in front of you guys, but I don't want my eyes to be tilted either. One's got to give. All right, so combing this hair back. All right, I comb this back into the head, straight down. All right, and there we go. So now we've cut our shape. Take a look in the back, make sure everything looks good. Cut across. So now we've got our shape in. So what I want to do now is blow it dry um, and use a couple different products. Uh, let me see here. I just want to make sure I got everybody's questions here. Um, Donna, thank you so much. Uh, see if special days or times, Eastern time, uh, he's on schedule. So Donna, I'm doing, I do this class. Whoa, that is the largest comment ever. Sweet. Um, I got to move that up. So, yes, so I do these classes, uh, every Tuesday at, um, oh, at, uh, 12 o'clock. Every Tuesday at 12 o'clock, Virtual Cutting Club meets every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. That's all Eastern time. Oh. Uh, let's see. Any cues? Any cues? Live chat, my friend requests, Laura. Mm. So Amy, totally agree. And I'd like to have this conversation. I wish, you know, I want to do more podcast-ish to have this conversation, but um, I, I totally understand. I mean, I've, I literally have a salon right there. So in the other room um, that is struggling to have clients as well. But that's not like people, if they were afraid, they would just let their hair grow. I think, I think we get caught up, like people don't love their hair as much as we love hair, right? So we love hair. We love doing it. People deal with their hair um, because they have to. So some, some of our clients love their hair and those are probably the clients that are coming back right now. The people that are struggling uh, with the virus, they don't want to come into a public place, those kind of people, like that cuts the business, the government, uh, the governor of my state, you know, cuts the business in half, uh, doesn't allow as many customers. There's a lot going on right now. This is not the, this is not, it's real, but it's not like the norm. So we're all getting through it. And I don't think somebody, you got to think like people aren't learning every single haircut. They're also not learning like if they get good at haircutting, like they just get good at it and they cut their own, but that's not going to happen. Um, that's not something that I worry about because I'm definitely like, I've never had a client leave me because they wanted to cut their own hair. 
until this pandemic, I could name a few that are not coming to me. Um, but I've never had a problem with a client not coming to me because I keep myself educated and I push through it. Some of the stylists that are struggling right now should make sure that they're focusing solely on education and growing and getting better because the better you get, the more in demand you are. You're not going to be in demand if you haven't studied since beauty school or you randomly went to a hair show and didn't sit in classes uh, and just went around shopping. Like that's, you know, these are all things that are reality. And now that's not you. That's not necessarily any of the people in this chat. I think you're on this to learn. Um, but at the same time, you have to push yourself. And for 16 years, I've tried to learn as much as I can every single day, every day. And I love cutting. I cut mannequins all the time. That's how this whole channel started was that I was obsessed with learning and getting better. No one can replace that. And no one's going to work harder than somebody that works the hardest, right? So you just got to keep working hard and work harder than, than you did the day before. Don't worry about anybody else. Don't worry about clients at home cutting their own hair. I have zero worries about that because I know I know more than them. So when they screw it up, they're going to come to me. And I built a reputation of people that want to come to me because of how much I study and how much I share and how much I love what I do and I have a passion for what I do. That's the, that's the, um, the recipe for being successful in this business. It doesn't matter if they kind of figure out how to cut a line. It doesn't matter. There's so much more that goes into it, so much more expertise. Now, if you don't have that expertise, you're going to lose in a pandemic. You just are. So if you're afraid of that, my, goal, my thing for you would be to study, 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 get better and better, cut every day, cut, but don't cut clients at a rushed pace. Cut to get better at what you do. Like cut to um, do it slow. That's why I like mannequins. Everybody gives me a hard time about cutting mannequins all the time. A mannequin doesn't set me a time limit. I can take my time. I can pause. I can do whatever. Um, and I can focus on getting better at all the little details of, of cutting hair. Nobody's going to learn that on a YouTube live or Facebook live. They're just not. They have to watch a, a hundred of these, then cut 10,000 haircuts, then watch other hair cutters to learn even more. Like you can't just learn that. We get out of beauty school. We barely even know how to do real haircuts. So a license like is a license because then we get to charge for it. But what makes you professional is somebody that works really hard. My wife is not licensed at all. She doesn't color hair for money, but she's better at coloring hair than most people that I know. So because she's been around it, we've done it together. We've had fun with it. You know, like it's just the license makes it so you have a, a job, a successful job, but it's not going to be successful if you don't study and learn. So sorry that I went on that but I just feel like people need to hear it. People need to understand that nothing else, it's your fault if you're not busy, as busy as everybody else, right? So I'm not saying that you're going to be as busy as you were in 2019. 2020 was the worst, but then you go into, you know, coming out of it, getting uh, people more comfortable, uh, making your salon more comfortable, making your salon uh, feel like it's safe, and then being very educated are the, the keys to moving forward and people actually wanting to, to take that time and be with you and spend time with you. All right. Chris Lang, I take time and not rushing. I totally agree with you. Uh, Arian, you're welcome. Um, cool. I hope you guys, you know, no offense to anything. I just think hard work is the key and not hard work like working all the time. Hard work as in focusing in on what you do, why you do it, how you do it, and getting better and moving uh, and doing that. So I'm going to blow dry. Uh, Q, overcoming calyx. That's a great question. Um, I will talk about, I want to break down calyx in the dry cut because that's where I'd really deal with them the most um, because uh, calyx can be the worst in the wet cut, but I did a lot of light tension, right? So we used uh, the wide teeth of the comb. We used no tension in some places. I scooped up the hair a little bit in some places. Um, so that's going to help with calyx in the wet cut. And then when we go into the dry cut, there's other things that we can do. Janet, I learned something every day. Very cool. All right. Actual hard work does pay off. It's totally true. 
I respect your opinion, although it slightly differs from mine. That's that's great, Amy. I, honestly, we should all have different opinions, and it should be okay to have that. So, um, totally cool. I just get to yell mine out, and you get to type yours, and that's you know. Uh, but it's all good. Everybody has their own opinion, and that's fine. Uh, cool. All right. So let's move into the blow dry. Um, what I want to do is I'll obviously play a little bit of music for you guys while I blow it dry. Um, I'm going to blow dry it smooth. I'm going to do a flat wrap technique. Um, let me see. Let me grab my brush. I'm going to use my Ergo Diamond Head brush. This is my favorite brush on the planet. Um, it is available on our shop as well. OGs, please post the shop in the chat because everybody's going to ask. Um, here is the Ergo Diamond Head brush. So here's a regular size paddle brush, and then here's the Diamond Head. Diamond Head just came back in stock. I love this thing because it's like a mini uh, paddle brush, but it has the same tension as a paddle brush. So when I'm working with shorter hair, I love this. When I work with longer hair, I use uh, obviously this guy, Ergo Paddle Brush. But uh, So it just depends on what I'm working on. Product choice today. Thanks to Paul Mitchell for being a part of the show. I'm going to be using, which I would choose this product anyways, Soft Style Quick Slip. Uh, this is a kind of cream-based product. It's got a medium flexible hold. They actually say it's soft hold. Um, so not a ton of, you're not going to feel any stiffness in the hair from this product. Um, one of my favorite stories, so uh, my dad actually, he passed away a few years ago, but um, this was his favorite product. So every time I even smell it, it's uh, pretty, pretty awesome. But he loved this product, and I don't even know why he loved it. And he would go, he didn't live near me, so he lived a thousand miles away. So he would go to, no joke, like, I think he went to Walmart to like the, the cut, the cutting place in Walmart and they sold Paul Mitchell and he would buy it and he'd put it in his hair and he'd be like, Oh, I love my hair like this, but it literally has no hold. So I, I don't know what, what he, I mean, it has a little bit, I guess, but it's just funny that he had short hair and he just loved putting quick slip in it. So I like quick slip for uh, medium length hair. Uh, he would also tell me stories that, you know, he would go into that, that hair place and he would tell them all about, free salon education, which was pretty funny too. So good times. All right. So now I'm going to go through, I'm going to blow dry the haircut and, uh, and smooth it out. And then we're going to go in and we'll do some dry cutting at the end. All right. Let's see. Let's see what music do we want to listen to? Let's see what this is. My apologies if it's not good. Come on. Thank you guys. Appreciate all the, the nice work. I think that song's too much. Sorry. It's too much for me. I don't know about you guys. I'm going to go here because I like... <laughs> this is a good... All right. This is better. more More vibey.
So, let me go here. So I'm blow drying, so hopefully you guys can hear me, but that's why I like to play music at the very beginning so it's not too much blow drying. So what I did, just to kind of run through everything, a lot of flat wrapping. What flat wrapping does is as I work around the head, it's using heat to take those broken down bonds from the water uh, and seal that cuticle down. So. Uh, it's using the heat to kind of form the hair to the head. So it'll give it that little bit of bevel. So you can see how it kind of bevels in. So if I was talking to one of my clients, one of the biggest things I would say to them is wrap this hair up and over your head in the front. Uh, in the back, you want to pull it around and over. And then that way, when it falls, it's going to have that little bit of curve. So you're basically using your head as a big roller, uh, hot roller. So I'll work that heat up and over like this and I come all the way across the head and notice that I'm not moving the blow dryer a lot so I might just kind of wiggle it a little bit just to break up some of that section but then I keep that airflow just passing over the hair I talk about this all the time but some of you guys are new in the chat heat uh, seals the cuticle down if I run the air over top of the hair the cuticle lays this way uh, kind of on top of itself like roof shingles right so if I, if I blow the hair the opposite direction, if I blow the air up into the hair, it's going to rough up the cuticle and the cuticle is going to kind of be open. So I want to seal that cuticle down, let that heat blow over top of it, and then that way I get a nice shiny end result and a smooth end result. So now I've got the hair. It's about 80% dry. I know it's in her face. Uh, it's okay. So 80% dry. When I get it 80% dry, I go in with Paul Mitchell hot off the press uh, this has got a flexible hold to it. So we go from using the quick slip to have a nice soft hold to just kind of get that shine, get the flow going in the haircut, get, add a nice smoothness to it, to then protecting it uh, using this heat protectant hot off the press and adding a little bit of extra hold to it. So I'll brush this into the hair, spray some of it uh, throughout and then that'll give me a little bit of added protection as I go back in and uh, keep blow drying. So the damage is going to happen when the hair starts to dry and you don't have products on there to protect it. Uh, you can also put base products on there to protect it as well. Uh, so now we're just going to go through, work that product into the hair and just get it even smoother. In my opinion, hair goes from uh, kind of damp to damp and frizzy uh, or to dry and frizzy and then to smooth. So I got to get it past that dry and frizzy uh, part and get it to smooth. So 
So now I'll come back the opposite direction and pull this hair up over the head. Just let that air pass over. This doesn't make your dry faster, right? Just keep that air aimed at the hair. Slightly, not at the head, at the hair. I'll do a little kind of a technique I like to do with just hold the hair with my pinky here and then scoop underneath and use the tension of the brush a little bit to smooth it out. Now I'm gonna work into the crown. And this is where you'll get a lot of calyx, so I like to work around that calyx and just kind of pass the hair one way and then back the other way. Almost there. All right, cool. So now I'm gonna do a little bit more, hot off the press. I'm Paul Mitchell. And I'm gonna heat up my smoothing iron here. Crank it up. This is the Express Ion Style Plus from Paul Mitchell as well. I'm gonna put this on 390. I talk about this a lot, but keeping your hair healthy and not ironing it too much is kind of important um, and not having too much heat. So one of the things that I would recommend is keeping the heat low on your iron and just taking smaller sections. That way you don't affect your client's hair. You also uh, can tell them that as well so that they don't hurt their hair in the process of doing it at home. So... Go in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt her head a little bit and I'm gonna work diagonal back partings and smooth the hair in that way. So I like to put it in my hand like this, pull tension onto it and then iron from mid shaft to ends. I'm just going to continue working back. Okay. 
I'm going to turn myself. Let's do a little Q&A. And if you've asked a question that I haven't answered, uh, just start posting it. I'm going to turn so I can see your chat um, for a little bit. Because this part will not be necessarily fully shown in the video. How long do you give yourself for a cut like this beginning to end? So this cut in particular, a uh, one length bob, I would give myself 45 minutes to an hour, uh, probably more like 45 minutes if I was really pushing myself. Um, Cause a one length is a little bit easier. If it was a graduated bob, I would definitely give myself an hour. Could you do this particular cut on thick hair? Absolutely. This is uh, it's a good haircut for thick hair. Um, it would obviously be a little more expanded at the bottom, but um, nothing wrong with that. I think the model in our picture had pretty thick hair, it looked like, uh, which I can go back and reference in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I would definitely do it in, uh, on thick hair. you look for in a quality cosmetology school? It's a great question. And honestly, see if I have a really good answer for you or if I don't, I think. I think the biggest thing with cosmetology school is not, it is the school a little bit. Um, like I know Paul Mitchell schools really do, uh, in my opinion, educate, uh, have one of the best curriculums in the U.S., for sure. I don't know about anywhere else. Um, and everybody that works for me went to one. Um, but with that being said, good hairdressers come out of all schools. I did not go to a Paul Mitchell school. Um, you know, a lot of people I know didn't, probably because they didn't exist really. Um, but it's about, again, your hard work and how you learn every day. Um, so, it's important because you're spending a lot of money to find a good school that's going to educate you, but you're really going to get your education based on your effort um, and how much you try to learn. So I hope that helps. It's not the school, it's the trainer. So that's true as well. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Where do you get your mannequin heads? It's a great question. So I get them from Pivot Point. Um, so this is the Gwen, I believe. She comes blonde, so obviously we colored her. But I like the Gwen because... She, uh, I like using blonde because then I can just easily color it. It's hard to color darker mannequin hair. And really enjoyed having these fun colored mannequins to cut. Is the blue chunky money piece an upcoming trend? So TM, uh, great question. It's, so this one, a popular uh, singer who we did that class a few weeks ago, and I showed this color technique as well. Um, I think a lot of the popular um, pop singers and uh, alternative singers are, because of Billie Eilish, I think really, uh, has a lot to do with it, her little kind of pop of color. So I think other artists are trying to do a similar thing. So this blue in the front is kind of, I think, that her version of that look. Um, but, you know, that's just my opinion. I obviously don't know why she chose it. But 
So I think pops of color are definitely going to be a trend for, you know, some people, younger people. Uh, it also does take like, you know, your money piece and it allows you to have some fun with it because it'll obviously fade out and then it'll become, you know, another, it'll just be blonde again. So you could have some fun with it that way. I think this is a case where celebrities do a more extreme version and then our clients will do kind of more subtle, a little more subtle, some of them. All right. Almost there, I just really want to get it nice and smooth before I start detailing. So I'm just giving a slight bevel too on the edge. All right, so we're getting there. Now what I want to do is just kind of add a little bit of spray to it. It has a little bit more hold to see where we're at, the overall shape, and I'm going to start cutting that perimeter line. Oh, so here is worked up. Another flexible spray from Paul Mitchell. Spray that in. This will just kind of Keep the hair in the place I want it. And I'm going to start working my perimeter line. All right. So we're going to start in the back. Bring this up. All right. Now bring this up, so I'm going to comb it kind of into natural fall, and then I'm going to start working a perimeter line and just defining that all the way around the head. So it's important to keep your eyes flat again because that will help keep a balanced line. So what you don't want to happen is for it to kind of flip-flop uh, around. So I like to go in, keep those eyes flat, and look at this from all different angles as I work through it. Cut up underneath. And this is that detail work I was talking about that you really can't rush this part. So the other part you can get through pretty quick. I'm using the tip 
to create the line. And then once I get the line kind of where I want it, then I can go in with my blade a little flatter and define it. I'm going to keep her head flat. And this part right here, this is where we combed it back into the haircut, which it's still going to live back there, right? Uh, so I want to kind of comb it back that way. Let me do... This I'm gonna slide clip in. These clips are the worst. Might create a little crease, but it's okay. All right, so I comb that back, and now I'll continue cutting into my line. Kathy, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Sunset has such a great question. Or Sunset. Do you have secret tips how to keep customers? I really want your to hear your opinion. So Sunset, that is a great question. Um, I think the biggest struggle that stylists have is keeping those customers. And the one thing that I've found is that we focus solely on relationship at the beginning of a client's journey with us. So like, let's say a client starts coming to us, um, they're new, we roll out the red carpet, we do all kinds of different things, we do a nice thorough consultation, we offer new ideas to them, they're psyched, they come back because they had such a great visit. Then, second round, they come, you know, we ask them how their hair was, what things they enjoyed about it, what things they didn't enjoy. We make adjustments, they're psyched, and they come back. Come fourth, fifth visit, a lot of times we get comfortable, we become friendlier, we have other new clients, the newness has worn off, and now we're not recommending new things, we're not pushing ourselves to learn new things. So now, that new client starts to think, well, maybe I need to go somewhere else because I need somebody that is going to treat me that way, going to give me recommendations. They love you, but they, they want something new and they don't feel like you're offering it or maybe they don't feel like you can do it. So, for me, the key would be to treat every customer, every time they come in, like it's their first time. Not like don't remember their name. I mean, you remember new clients' names anyways. But more like treat them like you, uh, like you would if they were new. Be interested in it. That would be my biggest piece of advice. And I think it's the most struggle for certain stylists. Comb this hair back off the face. Lower this. Okay, 
So same thing, keep the head flat. Now I'm working the opposite side. And it's one thing if the angle in front of you looks good, but then if you just slightly turn it, you might find that it doesn't look good. So you got to keep refining in all angles of the cut. And do a little bit of hairspray. Just smooth this down just a little bit. She's not real. She's fine. All right, so we're just continuing through. So now I'm going to start to let this out. I'm using Paul Mitchell uh, Hold Me Tight right here as my final kind of styling product. All right, almost there, guys. So I just take one more look, continue working that line. There. All right, so now I'll start looking at it in all the different angles here to make sure that I end up with a solid line all the way around. See that line right there, this line. I just want to keep working that. So 
That line looks pretty good. And then I turn it here. So I don't turn it all the way to the other side. I turn it here because now look at this line. So I want to keep defining it because this drops a little bit. So I'll go in and I'll start cutting this line around. That's why it's important to make sure that this head is not tilted, right? So you want to make sure when you look straight on, there's no tilt. Let's see where that line is. So it just drops a little bit over here. So then I bring it up. And this goes back to what we talked about earlier. Somebody wants to do this on themselves? I'm sweating doing it on somebody else. No one will do it like we do. The ones that work hard. Take a look again. See that line now? Starting to balance more. So right there. So all in all, I could definitely spend some more time, and I will, uh, refining that line. But that's kind of the idea. So you just keep rotating it, keep looking at it, and getting it to that, you know, that line that you're looking for right here. So it has a slight little balance with the jaw, and that's where we cut it to. So just take a look at that line that we created. It just has a, a much more flattering look when there's a purpose behind your line. You're not just cutting a line to cut it. So you cut it to definitely showcase the jaw. So there is look number one. Let me pop up what that what we were kind of mimicking here. Now hers is longer, uh, but I wanted to kind of do an in-between of look two and look one. Uh, so you can see it's just a nice blunt, nice blunt haircut. Shoulder length. Uh, looks really good. So there's that one. Now I want to quickly show you guys, because we've been on here for a while, uh, I want to quickly show you guys look two and how we're going to create this, kind of flip it a little bit uh, into look number two. They're not that different. I'm not going to cut it wet at all. Um, I'm going to cut the fringe, and then I'm going to cut uh, just into it a little bit and show you how I style it. So let's get into that one real quick here. The one thing I will wet down is the fringe um, because I blew it dry to go kind of backwards. Um, so I want to add a little bit of moisture to those. This won't take much. Okay. So now we've done that. How do we section it off? Here. OK, 
Okay, so this is kind of the, the queen's gambit, I think it's called. Uh, spin on a 2021 trend. Nice little flip out. Bob, if you Google Queen's Gambit hairstyle, I think that's majority of what comes up. They have a lot of cool hair on that show. I don't even watch the show, but I just did a little research. Oh, come on. All right. So I got a good center parting here, and I want to pull my fringe. Now, uh, this was a virtual cutting club class. Uh, I don't know if it was this week. I think it was this week, yep. So if you join the club, make sure you unlock that video of, the, of yesterday. Um, we talked about fringe a lot. And so this is based on client density, right? So this is fine to medium density. So she doesn't have a ton of hair. Um, so I can take a little bit more out of my fringe area to section this off. What I don't want to do is go past this bevel right here in most cases. So because that's going to cause styling problems for my clients. I want this hair that wants to fall forward to be a part of it. So let's go up the head shape. Switch combs here. So I go up the head shape and kind of where the head starts to pivot. Right here. It's a little pivot mark. I'm going to draw from that pivot point down to the hairline. So take out a little triangle there. So there we go. And I might take a little more. There we go. All right, so there is the first part of our fringe section. Put that away. You guys can see, nice little triangle out of the top. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So from that point, I'm going to draw down to the hairline. So why is this important, the way that we section this? Most importantly, we don't want to create sideburns in the haircut. So I want to make sure that none of this temple area gets locked in to my uh, fringe. The fringe, unless you're pushing the limits, really is going to live in this area right here to the hairline. So some people say edge of eyebrow. I go right to this hairline. That's a good stopping point for me. And now I've got this hair right here that... I can cut my fringe on. I'm actually going to take a little, a little less. Okay. So now I've got this area for my fringe. Again, add a little bit of H2O. And now I could cut this fringe using my scissors but it would take a couple more steps. And I honestly have so much success using the tri razor to cut a fringe that I don't see a reason why I would use anything else. So this has got to be one of the number one fringing tools there is, uh, let alone cutting layers and texture and all of that throughout the haircut. But this is the tri razor. Uh, we developed it from uh, and launched it in December. So we worked on it all last year. Uh, Got it manufactured. This is our tool. Um, you can get it on our shop, Shop FSE. So if you guys could please post that in the chat so everybody sees it. It's got, it's going to cut 100% of the hair right here. And then you've got two texturizing sides, which we're going to use in this cut. So her fringe is really textured. So look at 100%, and then you've got texture 25. So this will cut 25% of the hair. And then this side will cut 50% of the hair. So depending on the density that you're working with, um, I also want to put up look number two. All right, look number two. There we go. Um, so you've got your tri razor. We want to cut that kind of, oh, oh, right there. We want to cut that 
broken fringe sits just below the eyebrow, but then she has it styled so it kind of sits on the eyebrow. So that's where we want to kind of focus in. So, and then I'm going to show you guys two techniques that'll help kind of just kick out the, the bottom and then we will be good to go. So let's go back to this camera. All right. So I grab the fringe in my hand. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pinch it in my hand like this. I've done this a few times, but I'm going to do things a little bit different this time. So let me go here. This will be the easiest for you guys to see. Even out this section. You really want to make sure that your sections uh, mimic each other on both sides. The head straight. And this is really the key to being able to cut all at once. So if you want to cut your section and not take a bunch of sections, you've got to make sure everything makes sense where it is. That's the, the key to that. So here we go. I grab this hair. Um, in my hand, I'm not going to grab it too tight. So I'm not pulling on the hair. I'm just keeping it uh, all gathered together in my hand. But I also, even though I'm not holding it tight, I want to make sure that the tension in this section is all very similar throughout the, the cut. Now I take my texture 25 side, and that's what I'm going to go in and cut. She's uh, sprayed her a little bit. A little bit too much there. Okay. So I comb the hair like this. Pinch it together in my hands. Make sure my thumb is kind of pointing directly over the bridge of the nose. And then I go in. I got loose tension. And I start working that 25 texture side. Now I'll go a little bit high and a little bit low. So kind of back and forth. And then what that's going to do is just give me some different lengths and remove some of the hair. So now I've done that, right? Now I'm going to go in 100% and finish off the line. So just 100% cut through. Now watch what happens. A turner like this. You're going to see you get a nice kind of shattered, more shattered feel to the line as opposed to a more solid uh, blunt effect. So just like that, it's that easy uh, using the tri razor to go through it. Again, post it in the, in the chat if you can. I love it. We ship these worldwide. So uh, they're $44.95 for the razor. Comes with three blades in it and then five blade pack with it. And you can order extra packs of blades as well. Um, blades are really easy to change. So let me show you that real quick. So you just take this here. You find the side that has the edge. You pop this off and you lift up the top and it exposes the blades. You change the blades out. You put this back on, snap these two sides, put your top back on and you're good to go. Um, and the blades are really, really sharp and strong, so they work well. All right, so now what I want to do is blow dry the hair and then kind of finish off this style. So here we go. So how long do the blades last? The blades, really, it deter it's determined based on the thickness of the hair you're working with and then also um, the, uh, so the thickness of the hair that you're working with and the coarseness of the hair. But I'm, I'm finding, and I'm going to try to do a little bit more testing on this, but you'll know when you need to change the blades if you feel... Uh, if it doesn't feel like it's just taking the hair right off, it it should just like kind of like hot knife through butter, just kind of go right through it. Most of the time, you can just slide the tri razor through, so shouldn't feel any struggle whatsoever. Um, I'm finding that that's probably the third haircut I've done with that blade, um, you know, and I don't use it for full haircuts all the time either. So um, being able to use it just for that quick thing, you could do probably you know. 20 bangs, 30 bangs like that if you wanted to.
All right, so one more thing is going to happen. I'm going to use the, the tri razor again, and I'm going to do the 50 uh, texture 50 side on the hair to create the final part of this look. We've got a blunt bob. What I want to do is just right on the edge. So right about an inch above where it rests at the bottom. I'm going to go right here. Just like this. So right at the bottom of the hair, 50% texture, just swipe in. And that will add just that tiny bit of layering and break up the bottom. So I'll do that all the way through. Uh, just again, 50, texturize the bottom. You can already see it just pops texture into it. So it's not a blunt line anymore. Same thing here. Texture, here, texture. Now, and you could do that with a single blade. I think somebody was asking that um, or just mentioning that. You could totally do anything. I, you could do this with a scissor if you wanted to. It's just so easy to do it with the tri razor that I don't, I don't know why I wouldn't do it with anything else because you just don't need to. All right. So a couple things to style this up. I'm gonna grab my brush. I'm gonna give this a little flip. So I'm gonna add a little elevation to this and then put my iron underneath and just kind of kick it out a little bit. And you'll start to see that little pop and flip. See that? And you can see the texture that's, that happened from the, the razor. So same thing here, a little flip. Pretty simple. I know some of you are thinking, who would have thought we'd be doing this again? So if I grab this much hair in my hand, and I just put the iron in, and I flip out a little bit, it's just subtle. It's not, I'm not trying to be crazy with the amount of flipping. that same thing through the back just give it a little kick out all right and the last little bit that I want to do here is I got this fringe, and it's pretty much where I want it at this point, but I'm just going to cut up into it a little bit with my scissor. And that's just to add that little bit of separation uh, throughout. And then I'm going to finalize this style using Paul Mitchell Spray Wax, which is one of my all-time favorite products. See it right here. So again, flexible style. I spray that on the hair. This has definitely more of a, a kind of waxy feel. You can feel it in the hair for sure, but it's going to add the separation to the style. Through it. And I'll do the same thing in the fringe. So just piecing this just a little bit. And I like having a little more texture in this style. All right. Just cutting it. Don't even need. All right, so let me show you guys kind of this end result. Just taking that same blunt bob and making a couple adjustments, and now you get, you know, look number two, 
which has a little more kind of fun kick to it. Let's see, I know I'm in the way. Hang on. So just kicking out those bottoms, creating that style. It's pretty cool. Thank you guys so much. Glad you guys like it. Fun little transformation. So we went from look number one to look number two with just a couple swipes of a tri razor uh, to get it done. All right. So I see some of you guys are asking about the. Uh, oh, let me pop my camera. Uh, some of you guys are asking about the video of the color. So um, if you want to see that video with the color, just go back a couple classes. I, uh, I go um, Tuesday trim. It was the, uh, uh, we did the long, we did a long haircut, long layered haircut. And we, and I showcased the color in it as well. Um, the celebrity starts with a D, but I can't remember her name. Um, awesome. I'm glad you guys liked it. You see, go back to the main camera. Let's finalize things. If you guys have any questions, post them in the chat now. I'd love to hear those questions. And uh, that's pretty much it. So, let's see. A uh, few things to run down before I go. Uh, thank you guys so much for obviously watching. Um, we have all the tools that you saw on this show uh, for the most part are available on shop FSE. Make sure if you're looking to upgrade your salon furniture that you check out my friends at minervabeauty.com. Uh, they're the best in the business for having things in stock, shipping them quickly. Um, they have a huge warehouse outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, you know, they've been supporters of free salon education for a long time. And if you're looking for affordable furniture that is in stock, ready to go for the most part, um, they're, they're your, uh, they're your go-to. Also, Paul Mitchell, thank you so much for supporting me, being a part of this uh, class as well. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the Paul Mitchell products that we did. If you have any questions about those, uh, hit the link in the uh, description. You can also go straight to Minerva Beauty's website by clicking the link in our description as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. Make sure if you'd like to be a part of the virtual cutting club, uh, which does meet every Monday right here. Um, virtual Cutting Club. You can join me on Zoom every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and we can get better at haircutting together. Uh, I watch you guys on Zoom. I see you through your camera and I make adjustments to what you're doing and you guys can ask questions and all that. It's super fun. Uh, so I'd love for you to be a part of that. That's $50 a month to be a part of that group, but it's a really tight group. We have a lot of fun. I get to know who you are, what you're good at, what you like doing with haircutting, and we make adjustments from there. So um, that's pretty much it. Yep, that's pretty much it. I think we did a good job today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the class. Let me see where we're at. Uh, Christine, you're very welcome. Mam Frodo video tripod. Yes, that's what that is. Uh, thank you, Sunset. Appreciate that. Great question today. Uh, when shows can resume, will you platform for PM? Uh, pro I, I don't know. I, I never say never, but probably not. Um, this is my platform as of right now, but we'll see. Catherine, uh, Check out Catherine's post on Facebook. She's posting the website to get the tri razor. Thank you so much, Catherine. You're the best. Uh, Karen, thank you so much. Let's see. Second one is my personal favorite. But I will probably be at the hair shows, just so you guys know. So I tend to try to figure out how to be there some one way or the other. But uh, I don't know. I'm never, I don't think about all of that yet. Um, on the second cut, I must have missed it, but why? What center part angle or diagonal instead of straight back in the line with the nose? So, the y. so I'm not sure this question, Carrie. Um, 
but in the second cut, it should be center back. So maybe it was on a slight angle. I'm not sure, but it uh, shouldn't have been. So should have been a straight triangle down. Like if you look at, and I'm getting a new board, I promise, uh, tomorrow. So you guys don't have to see this blackboard anymore, even though it's cool. It's uh, very reflective and not magnetic. So, um, so here, if you look at the head shape here, It'll focus. Um, it was a straight, this is how it should be done. Straight parting down, right? Then when you get to this point, then you take your parting to the hairline on both sides. So then you've got, this is your fringe area here. And this is what you're going to cut down with the tri razor. So you pull it all to a center point here. And then you cut on that, at that point, oh, let me back out a little bit. So you pull everything to this point, you hold it in your hand, your thumb should be pointing at the nose at that point, and then you start cutting right about here with your 25, and you cut here, then here, then here, then here. So you kind of go back and forth with it, with the 25. Then when you get halfway through, you start carving with the 100 texture side. So you start off, this might be kind of hard to see, whiteboard will be much better. So you start off with your 25 texture and you move here on the section back and forth. So I go up here and cut, down here and cut, up here and cut. And I'm not going big like this. I want to go different. So the 25 is taking out different 25s all over the place. So I go there and there and there. And then when I get almost through, switch to 100 and just finish off that line with little tiny strokes of the razor there. And that cuts it. So that's really the breakdown of that. Okay. Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? What's your favorite cutting lotion? Quick slips? Good. Um, which is what I use today. Now, I like to use whatever product I'm choosing uh, to be my cutting lotion because I want to work that product through as much as possible. So this one today was quick slip. Um, and then, you know, other times I might use a foam uh, something something cream based is usually my go-to and then uh, if I have to I'll use something different all right love to see you live can you talk a little bit about lightning apply on wet hair more tips so Miriam that's a great question as well um, so you guys might have seen the video where um, I put lightener on wet hair uh, to bleach somebody out to white. I learned that from Hair Like a Boss, who is a good friend. Um, he, he showed me that technique. I watched it happen live in the studio. So then I started doing it, and I love it because of the saturation of it. A lot of people think that it's going to dilute the hair. I really don't think it does. I think as long as the hair isn't soaking wet, you're not going to really dilute it. It just makes the lightener go through it a lot smoother. And I saturate the sections to, to make hair white with so much lightener that it's going to feel wet anyway. So I just, you got to really cake it on, make sure that hair is not really breathing and it's just uh, all that lightener is going into it. Uh, you're welcome. Can these techniques be used on natural? Can these techniques be used on natural hair? Yeah, uh, for sure. So... I think things change up a little bit and, you know, there's been a couple times where I've done this technique on natural hair wet, but a lot of times I cut, if I'm cutting natural hair, I'm learning to try to cut it dry. Um, I don't get the opportunity to cut it as much as I would love to, but, um, but I do try this technique, especially on a little bit more relaxed wave hair, uh, waved hair, you can do this technique and it looks beautiful. So somebody that has a nice wave to it, just no tension, just cut you know, that length. And then when you go to do the fringe, if you're going to do a fringe, obviously you cut that longer than I did because it's going to retract and go up. Catherine, you're, you're with it on the links today. So she's sharing the link to become part of the virtual cutting club. So very cool. If you want to be part of that virtual cutting club, just go to freesaloneducation.com. And you, uh, if you've already signed up, then just hit the membership tab 
uh, when you're logged in and you can change your membership to Virtual Cutting Club. Uh, if you've never signed up for our app, then as you're signing up, the first question it's going to be, do you want to be on Virtual Cutting Club or a free account? Uh, just hit the Virtual Cutting Club. All right. I see some more questions. I, I really got to go. It's been two hours and 20 minutes. That's a long time. Uh, but I will be back here next Tuesday, and I'd love to answer all of your guys' questions. So please, you know, log back in. I sometimes go live throughout the week as well. So make sure that you download our app, uh, and I'll send you the alerts through that that I'm going to be live. Uh, you can also text me. Uh, let me share my phone number with you guys. Um, I'm going to hide this, and my phone number is text. i got to fix this graphic, but here's my phone number. So all you have to do is text me, 215-608-2612, uh, and just say hi because that will get everything started. So uh, you can text direct to my phone, and then uh, we'll take care of it from there, and I'll text you anytime I'm going live so you guys know. Patrick, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Uh, keep this phone number up for just one more second. But again, 215-608-2612. You can always watch this back, rewind it back, and get the phone number um, that way. All right. Hairstylist locator address again is stylistlocator.com. So you're almost there. Stylistlocator.com. Uh, if you want to find a stylist that's part of our app and uh, is in your area, just put in your zip code, and it'll take you to... Um, profiles of stylists in your area that are a part of our community and you can send them a message through that website to then start your process of booking an appointment. And if they have a blue check mark next to their name like this, let me show you guys. Um, so right here, let me just pull up my profile. So if they have a blue, focus in, that blue check mark right there, oh, that means that they're part of the uh, cutting club, the virtual cutting club. So we cut hair together for the most part every single Monday at 11 a.m. Again, uh, over Zoom. So they're probably going to be the most in touch with what I'm doing. That doesn't mean that uh, people that are on there aren't really great uh, without being a part of the club. But being a part of the club, you know that they're dedicated to meeting with me every Monday and cutting hair. So, um, So that's it. I want to be on the locator. Donna, all you have to do, Donna Newport, what's up? I think I, think I know who this is. Um, but Donna, all you have to do is uh, download the app or go to freesaloneducation.com and create a profile and you'll be on styluslocator.com. All right. You guys are awesome. That's it for me. Thank you to everyone. We're going to go out with some music and I'm going to uh, see you guys next time. I'm tired. All right. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next show. I don't want to stay here now. Ain't going to keep it low now. If you want to go, let's go. Let's wrap it up and hit the road. I just got an awesome vibe. Striking the wind up